Now today we'll be talking about uh, volume control mode. Now what is this volume control mode? This gets any person who is getting admitted with shortness of breath, with uh, tachypnea where the RR is, the breath the respiratory rate may be more than 28, 30, 32, 40, where the saturation of oxygen is much, much lesser, which can be less than 90%, where the patient may have significant crepts, wheeze, Ronchi, or where the patient may have acute myocardial infarction with LVF with significant crepts. Now, in this scenario, there will be increased load on the lungs. So, a reduction of the workload of lungs is very, very, very important. In that circumstances, we can give a ventilatory support to the patient. Now, the ventilatory support to the patient can be initiated in either two ways. Either we can give volume control or we can give pressure control. What is this volume or what is this pressure control is? In volume control, we, what we do is we simply decide how much tidal volume we are supposed to give to the patient. So it's very simple calculation. Uh, if the patient weight is around 70 kilogram, then how we decide volume is we always give volume which can be 6 to 12 ml per kg body weight. 6 is called low tidal volume, 12 is called high tidal volume. Most of the time, 6 ml per kg tidal volume is more than sufficient to maximum patients. If lung compliance is very bad, and uh, suppose we start a patient on 6 ml per kg, and even after starting this uh, 6 ml per kg uh, tidal volume, if the saturation of oxygen does not improve to our target levels, support is does not improve to more than 92 to 93% because in most of the cases, at least 92% should be our target of saturation. So, uh, if the 6 ml per kg tidal volume is not giving us good saturation, we can increase it to 7 ml, 8 ml or 9 ml. But as we increase to more than 8 to 9, the chances of pneumothorax may markedly increase because more is the volume, more will be the alveoli stretched. So these alveoli will then simply burst out. They may burst out and pneumothorax may occur. So most of the time 6 ml, 7 ml, 8 ml can be started and most of the time 6 to 8 ml per kg is more than sufficient. Uh, tidal volume to start so when we are talking about this volume control what is the thing that we need to know is we need to know the uh, weight of the patient so we decide weight so on deciding weight we can simply start or uh, set the tidal volume so if his weight is 60 kg 16 to 6 360 ml so this will be the tidal volume that will be set now the second thing that we need to set is what RR we need to set. As we, uh, as I just told, ki the patient will be put on volume control. Control means the total respiration of the patient will be controlled by the ventilator. So as soon as we say control, we are talking about setting a respiratory rate. Whenever we don't talk about control, we are not setting the respiratory rate. So we know the normal respiratory rate is uh, 12 to 18 per minute. So most of the time, the patient who is coming will be always tachypneic. Their uh, respiratory rate will be more than 28. It can be 30, 32, 34. So initially, as they have come from outside, they are so much tachypneic because their lungs are flooded or they have LVF or whatever is the reason, their respiratory rate will be higher so that the lung workload will be higher so that the diaphragm workload will be higher, the heart workload will be higher. So all this workload will be higher. To reduce this workload, we simply give assistance by the ventilator. So what we can do, we can set a respiratory rate of 20 to 22 in initial phase, so that uh, if patient's respiratory rate is around 28, automatically 20 to 22, of these respirations will be supported by the ventilator will be given volume support or the pressured support to the lungs so that automatically 
lung work workload is reduced diaphragm workload is reduced and automatically heart workload is reduced why we don't keep respiratory rate of uh, more than 22 i'll come to that very short so rr is set volume is already set uh, the third thing that we need to set is fio2 we can whenever the patient has come with uh, tachycardia tachypnea or hypoxemia we always set saturation fio2 to 100% for initial some period that period can be half an hour one hour two hour three hour four hour depending on extent of lung problem depending on hypoxemia depending on the respiratory drive as soon as the respiratory drive or the tachycardia tachypnea hypoxemia improve we can gradually reduce this fio2 from 100 to 30% because what we breathe is what our air contains is 70% of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen so we always try to reduce this fio2 from 100% to up to 30% now why we always try to reduce it uh, to 30% there is one reason because these alveoli is where this oxygenation occurs what we are taking is pure air so air has suppose 21% of oxygen and 70% of the nitrogen now the property of this nitrogen is this nitrogen is inert and this nitrogen doesn't diffuse into this capillary so uh, no matter how much air we take uh this alveoli will be always kept patent by this persistent nitrogen because this nitrogen is, is inert it is not going to diffuse in the alveoli but what is the problem with oxygen is oxygen is freely diffusible so as soon as we take oxygen it can be com completely diffused to the alveoli so this alveoli may not have any oxygen left and it can be completely collapsed so this alveoli will get into this so it will get completely collapsed what we call it as atelectasis and if the atelectasis occur if the alveoli uh, if the alveoli completely collapse then there will not be any exchange of uh, o2 to the capillary there will not be diffusion of co2 into the alveoli so to prevent this we always try to reduce the 100% fio2 to 30% so that more and more air can be pushed with the uh, uh, oxygen that we are giving we are giving this 50% fio2 means what we are giving is 50% pure oxygen plus 50% remaining air so this 50% remaining air will have 70% of nitrogen means around 30% 35% of the uh, whatever combination of oxygen and air we are giving will be having nitrogen which will prevent the atelectasis of the alveoli or collapse of the alveoli so if whenever we are giving 30% fio2 means automatically 70% will be air so out of this 70% 70% is nitrogen so automatically around 50% of nitrogen will be there so that it will prevent the atelectasis of the alveoli so whenever we are talking about controlled mode we are deciding rr we say control only when we are setting up the respiratory rate so tidal volume we have seen now suppose we set uh, in the same patient if the uh, fio2 we set 100% we wait for around 2 minutes 3 minutes and if the saturation doesn't go beyond 86% it means ki in spite of giving pure oxygen the saturation is not improving it means the patient may have bad lungs because if the lungs are okay if the lungs are not bad then the saturation should have gone to 99% but in this case in spite of putting 100% fio2 uh, uh, in spite of putting tidal volume of 360 ml for the 60 uh, kg patient the saturation is still 86% so how to tackle this how to increase the saturation from 86 to 99 either you can increase the peep from 6 to 7 to 8 or you can increase the tidal volume from 360 to 400 ml or 450 ml so this we can do for few hours and after few hours as soon as the saturation is better we can try to reduce this 450 ml to 420 ml 
after maybe half an hour or one hour or two hour or three hour or we can again if on suppose 420 ml uh, saturation remains well uh, above 95 percent we can reduce it to 400 ml we can try to reduce this tidal volume to as much as less possible to up to 6 ml per kg we should not reduce ideally to less than 6 ml per kg tidal volume so we have seen this fio2 we have seen this tidal volume now we have seen this respiratory rate now two things are there one is t inspiratory and peep now what is peep peep is peak and ex, uh, expiratory pressure and what is that so uh, whenever a patient is taking inspiration and expiration at the end of expiration whatever positive pressure is there uh, that pressure is called peep that is peak and expiratory pressure so this pressure this positive pressure will keep these alveoli open just imagine this there is expiration going on and this alveoli is breathing in short uh, breathing out so at that point of time if there is no positive pressure maintained here this alveoli will completely collapse so if this completely collapses then it will take more pressure to open up this alveoli and there will be uh, co2 will be trapped out so for this carbon dioxide to get flushed out through nose outside our body it is very important to keep the positive pressure so that this airway remains patent so that this co2 can be washed out if this doesn't remain patent if this gets closed then co2 will be trapped and there will be increased pco2 in the blood which will cause co2 narcosis one of the most important problem with co2 retention co2 retention is extremely extremely common problem in icu any patient presenting to the emergency to the icu one of the most important test is abg or vbg the first thing that we see is ph the second thing we see is bicarbonate the third thing we see is uh, partial pressure of oxygen and the fourth important thing that we see is partial pressure of carbon dioxide it is extremely extremely important because if this pc2 is high then this increased co2 will combine with water and it will form bicarbonic acid that is h2co3 and this will get uh, uh, disintegrated into h plus and bicarbonate and this h plus is all acid so more is the co2 more is the pressure of co2 uh, very bad will be the ph patient's blood will be completely acidic and this acidemia what we call it as respiratory acidemia because of the co2 retention there will be uh, tachycardia there will be uh, hypertension which is very very typical feature of this pco2 retention patients tend to be very very drowsy and patient may have altered mental status and patient may have cardiac arrest at any point of time they have increased risk of arrhythmia at any point of time because of the co2 retention so co2 wash out is extremely extremely important so uh, this is uh, what is peep so just imagine the patient of 60 kg is put on 360 ml of uh, tidal volume the fio2 is set to suppose 100 percent and in spite of this setting if the saturation is not going above 95 if it is suppose remaining 84 percent or 86 percent then if the patient is put on peep of 5 usually to a normal compliant uh, lungs the peep that is kept is from 5 to 6 so you can increase it to 7 to 8 if it goes beyond 10 we say that lungs are extremely extremely bad lungs are extremely not compliant lung are lungs are very very hard we can see that lungs are very fibrotic or it can be very hard this can be seen in pulmonary edema or in uh, post covid lung fibrosis or any other restrictive lung disease where lungs are very bad or those for those patients where patient may have extensive ronchi v's where there can be extensive intestinal edema interstitial edema in the lungs so peep to start with can be started with five to six 
and it can be increased to 7, 8, 9, 10. But maximally, if it is going above 10, we say that lungs are really, really bad. So uh, the last thing for this volume control will be this T inspiratory. So what is this T inspiratory? Is This is the time for inspiration that is set. Now we must know that the RR that we have set is 20. In one minute, we have 60 seconds. So automatically, 60 divided by this 20 is 3. So each and every respiratory cycle will be of 3 seconds. So normally, uh, the inspiratory to expiratory time must be at least 1 as to 2. So we should take inspiration for 1 second and we should be doing expiration to twice the time that we are giving to inspiration. This is how we have sufficient oxygenation as well as we give sufficient time for the CO2 to get washed out out of our body. If this I by E is set to less than 1 as to 2, then there can be so much chances of CO2 retention that we never want. So, uh, if the RR is set to 20, automatically respiratory cycle will become of 3 seconds. If we set inspiratory time of 1 second, so automatically the expiratory time will be 3 minus 1, that is 2 second. If we set inspiratory time of 0.80 seconds, so automatically the expiratory time will be 3 seconds minus 0.8, that is 2.2. If we suppose keep the inspiratory time 0.60 seconds, for simply calculation so automatically the uh, expiratory time will be 2.40 seconds because the 0.6 to 2.4 is 3 seconds so automatically this expiratory time is 2.4 divided by inspiratory time which is 0.6 the inspiratory to expiratory time will be around 1 as to 4 we have to maintain i by e to at least 1 as to 2 if pco2 start rising because normal pco2 levels are in between 35 to 45 if the pco2 levels rise to more than 45 then we may need to increase this i by e to 1 as to 2 to 1 as to 2.2 or 1 as to 2.3 or 1 as to 2.4 now whenever we are increasing this i by e ratio how can we do we can simply do it by keeping same RR and reducing inspiratory time, we can make it 0.8 or 0.85 or 0.95. Automatically, the expiratory time will be increased. So automatically, I by E will be increased. Whenever we increase I by E to let CO2 get washed out, automatically the inspiratory time is going to reduce. As soon as the inspiratory time reduces, automatically the saturation of oxygen may reduce this can be tackled by increasing tidal volume or increasing fio2 so if you want to do uh, co2 washout but you don't want to compromise uh, oxygenation then you can increase the tidal volume or you can increase the fio2 and you can increase the uh, expiratory time by reducing the inspiratory time suppose if you make this uh, one second 2.9 second and on monitor you can still see saturation of 99 percent then you don't have to do modification to fio2 or tidal volume you can simply continue the same setting and you can continue the same i by e ratio so this was all about this uh, volume control mode i'll be talking about other modes as well in next videos